Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to a brand new Let's Play, where we're going to be playing Total War Records of the Three Kingdoms. And the title there should give you a little hint that we're not playing the pretty much the only mode that I see in anyone have any seen anyone play this game. We're not going to be playing Romance mode. We're going to be playing Records mode. So we're going to be going for like a classic history, history, uh, like a historical uh, Total War campaign here. We're going to be playing as Sao Sao, and we're going to be doing the campaign is going to be called the Lord of Wei, because it is the way. So yes, Sao Mighty Sao Sao is a diplomatic manipulator, which is actually very true. Um, but yeah, so it's going to be uh, we're going to be fighting along Zhao Haidun and Zhao Huiguan, and. Uh, our position in the, um, oh god, I can't remember the name, it doesn't actually tell me the name of the actual position, but for our position in very central China, we're going to be able to essentially, hopefully, put down, you know, everyone who's in our way and find ourselves uh, conquering China. Now, I am doing this campaign because obviously we have got the news of the new Total War coming out at the end of the year, around the end of the year. So I thought it'd be really fun to play uh, Total War Three Kingdoms and play it in the records mode because I've never actually played the records mode of this game. I did a little test and it's interesting. Now I'm going to say there are four mods I am playing. They're all going to be linked to the description. One of them is the Make Them Unique. Uh, one of them is a compatibility map patch for the Make Them Unique. The other two are Radius Total War because I do love me some Radius Total War. So let's get into it. China must be united. Embers rise, stark against the night. The tyrant Dong Zhuo wields the flames of destruction. Luo Yang burns. Chaos ignites as the power of the eunuchs is crushed. In the pyre, the hand falters. Opportunity glimmers in the darkness. One's weakness is another's strength. Cao Cao observes and prepares. The moment approaches. Order will be restored, no matter the cost. China is in turmoil. The great empire of the Han, stretching back ages beyond counting, is being devoured by corruption. The yellow turbans, thousands strong, their banners in rebellion. In response, generals loyal to the emperor rose up and put rebellion. The flames have run their course. Luoyang is nothing but rubble now. It is the work of the tyrant Dong Zhuo, who now wields power unchecked. He absconds with the emperor in tow. He is barbaric, but not altogether unwise. As long as he controls the court, he controls the empire. In peace, I shall be an able subject. In chaos, a crafty hero. What of the coalition, my lord? They have... The coalition is finished. They have lost their bite. But perhaps they can be rallied into something resembling their old strength. It seems that I must be the blade of China's justice. There is no other who can. Man's span of life, whether long or short, depends not on heaven alone. It's correct, Sao Sao. So, establish our power. Lord Sao Sao, you've been cast out. Brand an enemy of the Empire. It's clear that only you have the capability to end Dong Zhuo's tyranny and bring peace. You can use the surging population and pliable peasantry of your homelands to your advantage. Whilst vulnerable foes to the north make expansion their, benef their beneficial. The time has come to increase your prestige and influence to unite what has been divided. Let me just quickly, first things first, change that before I get annoyed by it. So, beware of Yuan Shu to the east, at uh, the west, sorry, and uh, Chao Chuan uh, to the east. 
be clean, clean the neighboring empires behind empire. Okay. So, pursued by Dong Zhuo's men, Cao Cao prepares to fight. The coalition is finished, and the tyranny of Dong Zhuo endures, despite your intentions. The time has come, has now come, to look to other plans. Although you have returned home, there is little time to waste. The tyrant has sent Han forces to apprehend you. They must be defeated before we can look into our future. Okay, so we'll get a taste of victory for that. So, I alone the biggest the difference, obviously, of records is we now I have bodyguards. China of strife. Uh, so yeah, it's going to be a lot more inter- and also- Bent frustration. Chaff must be promptly excised. If I click the right button. Yeah, these don't give unique bonuses anymore. It's instead you get unique abilities based upon what type of characters you play. As I walk this land, I'm also going to make sure I give you that. I see China's future. I'm going to give you that to give you. Get, make sure Zhao Hai Dun is uh, loyal to us. Uh, we can also just make him a chancellor straight away, so that's good. And we're going to make his brother the other chancellor. So we've got two chancellors now. This is I'm pretty sure is a feature of. Um, uh, radius because I have uh, yeah, I have played a little bit of radius um, Obviously I played it to test out whether or not this was gonna be worth doing But uh, yes, we need to make our first fight against the Han uh, Before we do I'm actually gonna do one thing because we can do some scheming I'm going to do my favorite dominion over the realm an engine is device a device is designed an engine is a device designed to complete a number of disparate tasks more efficiently than a man may do many unaided think of government like an engine from time to time it is necessary to force the engine to complete more tasks than it was originally designed to do yet in the same time frame as such send an order to each department stating that they must double the productivity but they will be compensated for it and this will allow us to immediately get a reform which is really useful because i i'm not going to get this although i need in the base game you need to because we start with them with stuff in this we're actually going to go immediately for military markets. Because Sao Sao needs to make his his uh, name known. Now, we can immediately get a trade agreement with Lu Dai. But unfortunately, I can't immediately get one with Lu Chong. So to get the one with Lu Chong without... Uh... What for today? Oh, no, I, yeah, I did actually need that trade route. Damn, that's a shame. Oh, well, Under let's go knock banana. this army off. And let's... Uh... Absolutely massacre them. China is in chaos. Yet through this chaos, I have found opportunity. Bickering people, they stack so well. It peace to China. Those who stand against me will vanish. That they will, Cao Cao. That they will. So... We've got already got some stuff we can use. I don't actually need them in this fight because it's uh, this battle doesn't require me to do anything more than to simply march all of my men over there. So let's have a quick look at Sao Sao and his retinue. So the, there is Sao Sao at the center of his formation of uh, what I believe are more than likely uh, tiger and uh, what they call their tiger and leopard cavalry. Yeah, Tiger and Leopard Cavalry. We've then got Zhao Haidun, who has a cataphract, I believe these are. So the different general types do have different uh, cavalry, it looks like. Though I don't know if there's a way to actually tell... Like, I don't know if there's a way to tell specifically what they are, but uh, I'm pretty sure this looks come. like Tiger and Leopard Cavalry. If we look at the Tiger and Leopard Cav, you know, they very much look the exact same. And obviously, cataphracts are the only one I can think of for these, but... Uh, I feel like there's got there be I feel like there probably is a way for me to find out, but I just haven't figured it out yet, you know. So let us speed up as our army marches. Yeah, if we put I could have put my guys I could have put us into a uh, a group so these guys we wouldn't be marching through one another. But it's not strictly po uh, necessary. let our men reorder now one one of the main reasons i actually wanted to play this game other than um due to the new total war is because this is honestly one of the best looking total war games on the market like don't get me wrong i love freaking i love uh, M uh warhammer and i think warhammer is a great looking game but honestly Stand ready. 
Nothing, nothing beats. Like, well, nothing beats is incorrect, but I do think this is definitely one of the, if not the best looking game. I, I just don't know what it is, like, they are, like, it just looks good, the blood looks good, like, it's, it's honestly I'm sorry. Did you say something? such a beautiful game. Alright, we're gonna do a, we're gonna do a cavalry, uh, encirclement of the enemy general. To loosen, let and loosen him up a little bit. With our, uh... You are pitiful. All right. Are you compensating for your lack of ability? Watch the enemy cavalry just get absolutely overrun. Sao Sao got in first, but there's Zhao Haichun, and there's the uh, Le Tiger and Left Cavalry and some Saber Cavalry as well. Just honestly, this game looks so damn beautiful. Like, shit, I turned around a little too much there, there we go. And then you've got the fighting, like the infantry fight, like honestly, I just, as much as I like the fantasy game, this just doesn't hold a special place in my heart still, even after all these years. Yeah, the enemy general got absolutely decked by Sao Sao and there's Zhao Hai doing that. Once he's dead, we'll uh, bring the forces to bear here. The enemy general is fallen. Right, Sao Sao, Zhao Hai Dun. Yeah, we also get these abilities, so we don't always get the same ability. Uh, different, um, a bit like, the abilities aren't as like badass, like a general just doing like 5,000 damage in a single hit. But they are like a lot more useful, like melee evasion, you know, there's still the range block chance and unbreakable, we can still cause fear, we can store, we can do speed. Like there are still all of the really cool bonuses. Uh, it's just they're just they're just different. And I actually like I legitimately think this is actually a little bit more interesting because it's, you know We're not just doing the same thing over and over again. We're not, you know, just, you know, spamming heroes, doing duels and all that stuff. Like, you know, it's it feels like we're playing a historical Total War game. Which is kind of what I want. That's kind of why I'm doing this again. You know, doing this. I wanted to play a little bit of a historical Total War, but I couldn't figure out which one I wanted to play. I did um, think about playing uh, Shogun, but I very quickly decided. If only because Sh the pro one problem with Shogun Total War, it's too similar to Nobunaga's ambition, so. My there we go. Were unmatched. Let's replenish. You fight for me. There we go. Glorious victory. The victory My is just beginning. Grows. A cautious tactical beginning. From here, I must continue to consolidate, expand. Future victory will only come through careful strategy. The banner of war is raised and Sao Sao marches. You are safe for now, Lord Sao Sao, but we cannot rest. The time has come to expand your rule. The nearby farmlands is an opportunity waiting to be seized and a chance to push back against the tri uh, those in thrall to Dong Zhuo. So that is what we're going to do. So I did uh, also build uh, the conscription office here because it's one of South Fowl's really good buildings. And this, it, Chen is a very, very central point for us to, um, you know, get going and create a very good uh, base foundation for our empire. And also like a very good Only point to be making a lot of, uh, a lot of move from. China at any cost. Now, I'm trying to think what I want to level up. Uh... I'm trying to think do i want to do like flexibility so more replenishment when commanding we could do more morale when attacking and battle speed i can get a, we could get a plus one rank for each people we could also just get you know extra aura of influence and some more authority that eventually will lead to unbreakable so, um and uh, extra eight morale this one leads to fire arrows and night attacks okay night attacks are very important Fire arrow is not as important because we will be taking archers out of his unit as soon as I am able to get a strategist by the name of Gorgia. Uh, I think I actually kind of like um, the extra replenishment for now. So I'm going to do that. Apply that. My lord. Let's go How look at Zhao so? Haidun. So we could get uh, some reinforcement range and encourage the ability encourage. I kind of like the idea of getting the ability encourage, to be honest. 
Uh, that one doesn't lead anywhere, but it is still a good one. And he's not commanding, uh, so... Yeah, that would only give him instinct. Instinct it gives melee damage, which is important, be. but I'm going to give him consideration. Perfect. Um, right, so we've got, we've got Coil Dragon, win a duel, two duels in one battle, because we don't have duels, and have a projective income of three grand, because uh, because of uh, a Radius, we start with quite a big income. So there's going to be a lot of battles in this game. There's going to be a lot of big ones as well. So that's going to be hopefully something you guys are looking forward to. I know I am. I'm going to send my father's house song to immediately get some money making here. Uh, yes, I'm going to let the population go down because I want to do some recru uh, recruitment, heavy recruiting next turn. So the quicker we can immediately get the recruitment, the better. Now, I don't normally do this battle because it's just a waste of time, but because it's records, why not? Our cause is righteous. Victory will come to us. Your words embolden me. Let us do... Right, we're not going to waste our time, you know, changing up our uh, look. Well, I'm happy with the uh, position of our men. Oh, da, 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 da. Walk. Yeah, there's one also. That's one thing the game tells you to do in records is really do want really do walk your men because they do lose um, their um, fresh. Like they, they like stamina really matters a lot more in records. So they have some G infantry. G infantry. G infantry. I do like the G or the uh, Kama uh, Kamiyari as the uh, Japanese would call it. Uh, yeah, I'm also just going to reorganize these guys because my cavalry is kind of... Uh, da, 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 fuck off, that does not... Yeah, I, I probably should change it to uh, run as not being the default. Let's actually quickly do that just for this Let's Play. Uh, and also, just to show you guys my graphics then, I've got it on everything. I only have a 2070, but you know, going to get a better one eventually. Uh, post effects. Ooh. Yes. Uh, some settings may be applied in the next time of campaign or battle is Okay. Good. I forgot about that. That was possible. Yeah, I want. I want. I want the uh, records look to it. Uh, interface. Is it controls? I don't remember where about it. I know it's in here somewhere. I just don't remember where. Ah, feck it. We'll be fine. I don't know it's an immediate difference, but I'm sure I will. If it looks a bit too dreary, we will just go back to um, a, re a romance look. I would still like to be no. I would still like the game to tell me exactly what unit they ha uh, have as their bodyguard. Just need to figure out where it could be. Yeah, because of that building right there, we're going to position ourselves over here. And then we'll uh, advance on them. Right. Right, this is where we start maneuvering cavalry. Yeah, for now, my uh, my uh, my goal is to do the same strategy every time when it comes to the cavalry. Use my cavalry as a flanking force and go from there. Take out their archers. Our archer militia should take out their archer militia. It's like a little soft counter. We also have sharp eyes done over here. And our uh, tiger and leopard cavalry a little bit. Oh, sorry, heavy tiger and leopard cavalry a little bit further around. Saber mounted saber cav. We'll bring those rounds. I'll take two. I was gonna say I take too long to form them up. Yeah, their archers are getting absolutely wrecked. Right, let's bring our, let's bring the cavalry into the uh, into the enemy. Yeah, 
South South should be able to absolutely shatter. Yep. Absolutely shattered them. And he's only using heavy tiger cab. Heavy tiger and lesser cab, sorry. Copy. This is where our actual heavy infantry is. And that is uh, the G infantry crab, since they are a lot heavier than the G militia. Pull back. Oh, yeah, we also lost quite a bit of our own because we did. We did just charge into the G captain. So, you know, I can't say I expected anything else. Look, the enemy There we go. Lost more men than I should have, but yeah, you know, it's fun. We're only in the beginning camp of the campaign. We've got time to waste, you know. We've got men. We can waste a few men early on. Get those kills to level up some units. Uh, pull those back for now. So that our cavalry can get uh, like Sao Sao and the uh, Zhao Haidun can get it. There's uh, still quite a few there. Yeah, I do think the game looks a little bit more shallow now in terms of like it looks a little bit more dreary, which I kind of like. Yeah, we'll claim victory. I, I don't want to waste too much time. Right, I do apologize, guys, that I don't talk my on the loading screens. It's just because of the way that uh, I'm recording this. I'm using my old recording method for this. Because I know that it look, it'll look better in the... Like, the video will actually look a lot better than if I use OBS, at least in my opinion. All right, so we now difficult own the farm at uh, Peijan uh, in the Chen Commandery, which is uh, great. So, we can't raise an army or anything right now because of the way, the, uh, the way that it works. We have to wait for ne until the next turn. There's no scheme I'm really too interested in doing. Um, Diplomacy-wise, a non-aggression pact with Kong Zhao should be uh, definitely doable. Um, wish. Also, with, with okay, you don't want it that much. Welcome. Let us talk. Like, how much credibility would I have to use to get this to work? Like barely any. Good. We approve this. Because I want, I want to keep, I want to essentially keep certain people are like. Oh God, you want a bit more? Good You're day. gonna want quite a bit of credibility. Eh, I'm not a using it right now. Offer. So we'll, uh, we'll use it on the, the uh, getting our. Uh, so we're essentially protecting our northern flank, so I can go after, after the, uh, after uh, certain people. Right. Let us end the turn. So that's our first turn down. Uh, quickly uh, edit the options to make sure everything goes fast. Confirm. So yeah, my initial goal is to go take uh, Xuanan or Fuli and uh, essentially expand into a second commandery because I knew that there's a, they, uh, they always start with an army nearby there. So it's going to be very important to take that army out. South side administrates firmly but fairly. My economy grows. An army is called, and Cao Cao looks to lead. Word of your efforts has spread, and there are many, now many, who admire your ambition, believing you to be the one who has the strength to, and drive to reunite China. They are willing to put their faith in your leadership and offer their talents to your service. It is time for you to start recruiting warriors for the long battle ahead. Well, not only did I doubly prepare that, I triply prepared it, because I've also got some, uh, you know, thing working on it. Now, as you can see, there's a lot more cavalry uh, in the game, and a lot more units in the game in general, because of the uh, the mod. Not everybody has immediate access to these units, and I don't know how many units there are in the game in total. I legitimately do not know how to, like, find out. So, we're just going to have, uh, we've got, we're going to have a little thing. But first things first, look at all these. So, we've now got quite a few people to hire. Now, I have, like, a very specific way of playing this. And you'll see what I mean. Uh, not that one. Oh, my core. I like to hire people who are special. So who have the golden name. And they have a unique portrait. They are my bread and butter. Because they are unique. They are unique people. They are special people. So they're, they're going to be good for a reason. 
Now, right now, we are currently losing population, so I'm going to build the irrigated farms to help get some people. And then we're going to mess with Sao Sao's unit. So we're actually going to change this to the uh, Xuanjia, Xuanjia archers, who are basically much better than, like, we uh, use the comparative tool. They are better in everything but movement speed and ammo capacity. Because these guys are level 2 and these guys... Actually, these guys are level 3. How do the level 2 beat the level 3? Ah, oh, well. We're still going to change them up. And we're going to recruit two more units of it. And we're also going to get rid of this Saber Infantry. Because, honestly, Sao Sao is better with heavier cavalry. I'm also going to get rid of the Saber Cav. And, stupidly, I'm going to spend the last little bit of money... Oh, I can't, I can't get Tiger and Leopard Cav, so we're not going to do that. Uh, then we're going to spend the last little bit of money on um, Zhao Haidun's uh, units. And unfortunately, actually not, we're not going to get rid of that because I can't afford to do what I want to do then. Which is what, what I want to do is I want to get, uh, I think it's two of these guys, the Northern Spear Guards. Uh, good against Mad, Missile Defense, Anti Cavalry. They have a little bit more health. Let's do a comparison. They are pretty much bare in every way. So we're going to, oh, I can only get one of them. Bollocks. Uh, let's just get two spear guards for now and we can uh, mess with the... Actually, you know Strong what? Leadership. Screw that farm. That farm costs a lot of money. Uh, just, you know, don't build anything this turn. Ah, I already clicked off. It's fine. I've just realized I clicked off anyway. It's fine. So we're going to recruit that this turn and they're going to get recruited a lot quicker due to uh, the mustering rate uh, that Zhao Haiyuan has uh, got down for us. You could help construction costs and building upkeep here. It'll take him one turn to get there, so next turn we'll be able to take advantage of that. But let's see where everyone marches on their next turn. So we're three turns in. Going pretty well, in my opinion. Like I said, I need to take Huan Nan, though. Uh, or Fu the uh, farm of Fuli. Because one of Sao Sao's strongest things is building a breadbasket very quickly. He starts in a very, very fertile region of China. I'm going to leave them alone. Normally, I, pr I would attack a unit in Force March, but I'm actually just going to go take Fuli because I'm pretty sure with my increased forces, I can force a submit or a, uh, a I can demand a surrender from them and just immediately take that problem. An army is called and Sao Sao looks to lead. Opportunity glimmers and Sao Sao senses power. Your initial advances were promising, my lord, but bolder steps are required. You must take control of the entire commandery. By doing so, you will take contro control... Uh, set by doing so, you will solidify a central position that allows you to administrate and strategize more effectively. From such a position, you can then more easily expand your influence and fight any other warlords in your way. So we're not actually going to do that. And also, uh, an adept recruiter, a young administrator in your account by the name of Yue Jin, has gone on above and beyond the requirements of his station. Unprompted, he has recruited a thousand fresh troops from his hometown to join your cause. Elevate him. The reason I say elevate him, and if I keep clicking... Oh, don't. He is a unique lord, and he starts at level 4, and he's an expertise general. I do like expertise generals in both ways, or he's a sentinel general, essentially, is a better way to say it. Um, now, normally, the game wants you to go take uh, uh, Ruyang, but I'm actually going to go take uh, Fuli, like I said. Um, will the man surrender? There we go. We'll occupy. Taking the settlement. Mission success. My uh, credibility increases. We do need to get ourselves up to high credibility. Now we could do this. Let's just do this one. So we'll uh, we'll send some missives out and get ourselves some increase. And we also got you know this new commandery. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do anything with that because we're gonna raise a new army in uh, in Shuyang. This army would normally be led by uh, Zhao Haiyuan, but I'm actually gonna have Yue Jin recruit it, uh, lead it. My aim is precise. I'm also going to uh, get him. I'm going to put Sao Ren in his army. Lead strong. I would be alone for a time. So, this is going to be our new army. Uh, ooh, I'm not going to get rid of those units because they're good and I probably can't re recruit them. Yep, didn't think I could. Uh, we're then going to get. We need expertise units in his army. As you can see, he has a lot more of them, including these really good ones. I'm going to grab two of those. Uh. And I can't afford to do anything here because we did spend a lot of money building the army. Welcome. Uh, we also have talk. three immediate level ups for Yue Jin, the Lion of Yangping. He's also very loyal to us because uh, 
He has a fondness towards Sao Sao because we raised him up, obviously. Uh, we raised him up so he could stand on mountains. Let's actually give him this so we can get some cunning up because right now his cunning is uh, and his instinct are problems. Uh, we don't have anything else to give him. That's great. Uh, so, we, what can we do? So, we can either do stability for the first one, which unlocks the... Well, only those only really pay, matter if he's going to be uh, doing other stuff. The, the authority does matter, because it means that he'll be able to give more stuff. But again, it's only really morale, and morale is very useful. There are better things we could do. Now, this does lead to intensity, which gives uh, uh, enables mighty knockback and will give charge speed of his retinue. Um, but it also gives him some more instincts, so which is, would help counter campaign that movement range and also replenishment. And it would also get, could lead to Diligence, which gives us uh, plus 8 melee evasion for our retinue and plus 25 bonus experience per season, which is really good. But again, you'd have to be the Prime Minister, Faction Heir, or Faction Leader. So not as immediately beneficial to us. Uh, but if we go this route, we can then also get to Sentinel, which gives us uh, just gives us straight up uh, uh, experience for the entire army. Or Scholarship, which gives us character experience and then extra income for any uh, for his, you know, commandery. However, if we choose to go with Zeal, we get the extra melee armor piercing and some melee attack rate. We could then get Perception, which uh, enables ignore forest penalties and plus 20%, 30 percent chance of avoiding ambush, which then also leads to Bravery, which enables neg charge negative and enables immune to fear and terror, and which eventually leads to Composure. Now, I care about Nye Battles, so I'm actually going to smash straight through this, because these three, to me, are the most important. It also gives me a healthy bonus of expertise and authority. So, you know, that's a win. Now, with uh, that having been taken, is there anyone else I can do some... Uh, uh, I'm trying, uh, you don't like me that much, that's fine. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll leave you, we'll leave that then for there. Uh, yeah, I think what we'll do is we'll do one more turn and then we will end this part. I think that's fair. Battle is not always the answer. So you want the military G, the map? No, no. Your choice. That is not a fair deal for me. I get that you're powerful, but uh, that's not a good deal for Sao Sao at all. Yeah, so they're going to go to Chen, which is where we're going to send Yue Jin. And Sao Sao is going to go for uh, Shou Chun. Because if we take these two, it'll put us in a prime position to attack the enemy I really attack afterwards. The death of Sao Song. Word has reached you that your beloved father, Sao Song, has been ambushed and murdered by the vile Tao Qian. There will be a time for grieving later, but now your advisors are calling for you to act. So we could follow the story, and we could attack Tao Xuan. But I'm not going to. I'm going to be. I'm going to do what I think smarter. I'm going to bide my time. Unfortunately, it does mean my father is killed. But the reason I'm not attacking Tao Xuan right now is I have a, like, I think, even though historically Cao Cao didn't do this, I think it makes more sense for Cao Cao in this timeline, or at least in my timeline, for him to be just, to take the foot off the brake and think to himself, no, I need to chill. I've got enemies at my doorstep that I need to deal with. We'll deal with, you know, we'll deal with everything else later. So that's that to you recruited. Um... Yeah, so we're going to bide our time, essentially, and we're going to take a strength in ourselves so when we do put our foot to the neck, we can do so in a much more convincing way. Uh, now, what do I want to get right now? Uh, that's really good because it gives us peasantry income. I'm actually going to get that trade. Uh, I want to get that ability to trade because... Yeah, I would I would like some extra trade. Let's negotiate the Greetings. deal and get a little... Well oh, no, 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 no. Let's get a little bit of money in return. It's not going to be much, but at the moment, any money is good money for us. Ah, damn it. There we go. 577, I'll take that. We reach an understanding. Thank you, Louis Xiong. So that gives me up to free grand again, which means I can actually build this, which is kind of the reason I was doing it. Uh, yeah, these armies, uh, they should surrender here straight away. Oh, he didn't. Okay, then. Well, we'll, uh, we'll continue Crush sieging them. that. So I guess uh, this is also the leader of the Han Empire, as you can see. Well, the leader of the Han faction, Han Fu Song. And next turn, we'll be able to march out on Chen. 
Um, so yeah, as you can see, we've uh, grown two, grown home to two provinces. We'll be growing, we'll be finishing the commandery of Chen off in a moment. Uh, there is an enemy here called uh, uh, He, I think it is, uh, and he will be uh, one of our big problems. It's a, he's he's part of the yellow turbans. We need to put him down. The problem is he is quite expansionist, so we need to make sure we get a good amount of expansion, a good amount of armies built up before we attack him. But anyway, guys, we're going to end this part here. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys did enjoy, please do follow me on YouTube. Leave a like, leave a comment, leave a share. But most importantly, guys, stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. See you guys then.